and not get stuck in the past. To lay aside our Baptist distinctions, our Presbyterian traditions, our Pentecostal traditions, and let God move in our meeting. Most churches you go into, they've got a fixed pipe. At the beginning, this happens, then this happens, then that happens, then this happens. And then we have the benediction at the end of the service. And some church will get upset with you if you don't have a benediction, if they come to a meeting and you don't have a benediction. Matthew 7 verse 8 says, Matthew 7 verse 8 says, For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men as washing pots and cuppies. Another verse it says in, another translation says, You disregard and give up and ask to depart from the commandments of God. Jesus said in another place, You make the word of God of none effect by your traditions. There are people that have got religion, religion in their church that is no way, it, it doesn't fit in with the scripture, but they hold on to it. I want to make this statement, several statements here today. Do not put God in a box. Do not put God in a box. The religious leaders of Jesus' day criticised Jesus not because he violated scripture, but because he, he went against man-made traditions. The amazing part about it was you could, go, you could have gone to any synagogue in Jesus' day and you would not see blind eyes open. You would not see deaf ears open. You would not see the lame walk. Nothing ever happened in the synagogue. There was no move of God. And yet, the religious leaders criticised Jesus because he went against their tradition. There was a man on the internet that asked me a question. Actually, he wasn't really asking with the intention of learning, he just wanted to debate. He did not believe that you could have a two way conversation with God. He believed that, well, God does not talk to people today. Why? It's not because the Bible, the Bible doesn't say God doesn't talk to people today. But because it went against his tradition. He went against his doctrine. Because he had a doctrine in his church. He, he, sorry, he went to a church that had a doctrine that God stopped speaking to people directly when the canon of scripture was completed. When the last apostle died, God stopped speaking to people directly. Now, we've only got the, we've got the Bible, God doesn't speak to us anymore. So, he's put God in a box because of his doctrine, because of his tradition. He puts God in a box. So we pray to God, but don't listen because God ain't going to speak to you. So you pray all day and you have one-sided conversations. Well, I want to tell you, friends, I, I, that's not the God that I serve. My God talks to me. His sheep hear his voice. He speaks to you and to me. I don't have one-way conversations. When I ask God for something, I listen to what he's going to say. Someone says, well, we're going, you go into the, you go, you go by the Bible. Oh, yeah. So what, what I, I believe in going by the Bible. 
But nowhere in the Bible does it say that God will stop speaking to people when the Bible is completed. He never said that. Now what am I supposed to do? Heavenly Father, I've got an invitation to go to Nigeria. And I'm, I'm seeking your guidance on this matter. Should I go to Nigeria? No, my Bible, Jeremiah chapter 26. David McKivitt will go to Nigeria. <laughs> it's not in there. Okay? God still speaks to people today. Now, God never goes contrary to his word. God will never tell you to do anything that violates his word. But I want to tell you, friends, if you are not on talking terms with God, then there's something wrong with you. I serve a God that speaks. God didn't give us the Bible and then go into hibernation. He still leads. He still directs. And I feel sorry for anybody that doesn't hear the voice of God when they are praying. Because God does. Sometimes he speaks to us through our conscience, speaks to us through our thought life. But you know that God, he speaks, sometimes he put, he put a thought in your mind and you know it's God speaking. You'll pray about something and instantly you'll suddenly know that God has given you the right word. God has given you the right word. And God does it in, a, in an amazing way. I was, um, I went to the market yesterday. No, Friday I went to the market and I saw some uh, Christians having an open air meeting on there and I liked the way they did it. They had uh, a table, they, were, they had drinks on the table, soft drinks, tea and they said, and when I came up they said, you want a, you want a drink? So I was at the table having a drink and then they came around and casually kind of talked to you and they, then they started singing songs. And I thought it was very good. So I phoned up another pastor. And it just, I don't know why I didn't phone up any other pastor, though I know plenty, but one pastor I felt that I should phone and speak to that pastor about their church doing that. And I phoned up. I couldn't get through. So I phoned next day. That was yesterday. And uh, when I phoned up, they said, Pastor McKibbin, this is of God. We are in a meeting and we have just been discussing about whether we should have an open air meeting and um, bring drinks along for people to drink. And you phoning up saying that is the word. You know, they were praying and asking God and then God spoke to them. In this case, it was through me. Now, I didn't know they were praying. I just felt that I should phone that pastor and it confirmed what the pastor already had. I already had thought about. So it was a confirmation. I want to tell you, friends, my God is alive. Amen. My God is still talking to people today. Now, some might say, well, my church don't believe that. That's okay, I don't go to your church. I don't go to that church. I don't, well, I don't go to a church that has a dead God. I go to a church that has a God that cares about you and me. He leads us, he guides us, he directs us, he speaks to us, he's still healing, he's still delivering, he's still working miracles. My God is immutable, my God is unchanging, and my God is still meeting needs today. And we must be prepared to lay aside our traditions, our preconceived ideas, and let God speak to us. And I say, I'm not saying that we should ignore scripture. But don't limit God. Don't limit God. Religious tradition, preconceived ideas are a hindrance to hearing from God. 